Hi, and welcome to Notes from the Field, the Garden Continuum's video blog. I'm Monique Allen, and today we're going to be talking about weeding. Now, no matter whether your garden is old or new, weeding is going to be a part of your life. The key is to do weeding so well that it's not a consistent and painful part of your life. So are th there are three things I want you to think about with weeding. One is the tools you use, two is the technique, and three is the timing. All very important. If you get these three right, then weeding won't be painful. You'll actually be very successful. So what I want to do is show you something about weeding that I want you not to do, and that is to just rely on these for weeding. So follow me, and I'm going to show you some pretty big weeds. So this right here is an amaranth that's been allowed to go pretty big, and then we've got some crabgrass here. Now, these roots have gotten big enough that they have a big grab uh, with their root system. And if I just try to pull this by hand, what happens is I'm ripping, I'm just like getting the plant ripped right in here. I'm not getting the root. What I want to do is I want to get that whole root out. So if I use something like a claw, I can put that claw in and I can pull with that claw and loosen all those roots out. And that's super important. Getting the roots out is part of how you totally get rid of the weeds. And you can see with crabgrass what happens. The bigger you allow crabgrass to get, the more it'll root. You've got your central root right here, and then you've got all these little roots on the runner, even some tiny ones starting. Now with amaranth, it's got a little bit of a different rooting structure. It's going to be long and tap-rooted, so it's actually hard to pull. A lot of times what will happen is people will break it off and do this, and that root is still in the ground. So again, either use a claw, or in this case, I'm going to use this tool, which is a Japanese hoe, which has got this really nice point on it, and I can just loosen up this soil so that I can actually get that whole tap root out. Now, if you leave, if you just, if all this comes off, doesn't really want to come off, but if all this comes off and you think you've weeded and this is just underground and all of this is left in the ground, this plant has a lot of energy and it's got all these little buds, it'll grow right back and this taproot will get bigger, so it'll be a bigger problem. So working with tools is super important. Um, the tools that I just showed you, this is a three-time claw. This is an old, old one. This one's probably getting toward being an antique. There's nothing ergonomic about it, but it's one of my favorites. And this is a short-handled of the same thing, a newer version. But these tines with the spring make for the most comfortable weeding. This is the Japanese hoe that I talked to you about. It's really a fun tool because this point, and this is a very strong metal, and it will go into the ground. You could just get a lot of force with it. Also, if you have small weeds, you can scrape along the soil this way, and it's a great tool. Sometimes you have weeds that are really deep in crevices, and this nice tool will go right in along the crevices and help you get those weeds out. Now, sometimes weeds can be so tenacious that what you really need is a shovel or a four-pronged fork, like a, a spading fork. Um, this is a little shovel that I keep with me, um, and it's wonderful because it's small and it's also very sturdy, and I can lift the soil like this with my shovel and loosen my weeds up, and they just pop right out. So if you have a very um, weed-infested area, sometimes just going in with a shovel makes sense. So we talked about tools. We talked about technique. Now I want to say a little bit about timing. Timing with weeds is super important because if you allow your weeds to go to seed, then what happens is those seeds will begin to ripen and then they will just poof out and be all over your soil. Now, all the seeds that go down won't germinate in one year. They'll go into the soil into what's called a seed bank. And Mother Nature only allows certain amount of seeds to germinate at a time. And so Every time you let your weeds go to seed and put a deposit in that seed bank, that seed bank is going to pay you interest. 
it's going to grow in how many weeds you get. And there's an old um, agricultural or farmer's adage that goes, one year of weed, seven year of, no, I did it wrong. Let me do that again. There's a adage that goes, one year of seed equals seven years of weed. So if you let that one big plant go to seed, that year, that plant will deposit enough seed in the seed bank for seven years of weed. So you want to avoid that. So timing is important. Weed before your plant goes to flower and you can make sure that it doesn't go to seed. Now I want to show you a little sneaky thing that weeds do and we've got to go over here to do that. Okay now I've moved to another part of this garden and I want you to look right in this area right in here. You can see that you can notice the the plant and then a, a space of mulch and then a plant. If a weed was growing right here you'd see it perfectly easily and you'd be able to pull it. But here's the thing, weeds are sneaky and what they do, they want to survive and so what they'll do is they'll often germinate in a protected location. So I want you to follow me over to here and what you'll notice is we have two really nice day lilies and a black eyed Susan but nestled in between, if I just move some of this foliage out of the way, you can see this amaranth weed growing. So it's just hiding in this little tucked away spot, hoping to be able to live without me noticing it. So You've got to look in the spaces in between your plants. Now I've got another real sneaky one right here. So you can see this daylily foliage and right down below, tucked in at the base of the daylily is a little cr tiny crabgrass. And you can see how close it is to the base. These are the weeds that actually cause some of the biggest problems because they get missed. And then what happens is the roots of that weed will highly invade the root of your perennial. And so we want to make sure to get that out. And if you, so what you want to do is you want to be careful of the perennial's roots and tease that weed out. And then I'm going to show you this crabgrass up close. You remember the one I showed you earlier and how big it was? You look at this teeny tiny one and if you look right here, you can see that this crabgrass has already flowered and it's starting to set, it, set its seeds. So it doesn't need to be a huge plant to be making deposits into the seed bank. So that's weeding. You want to remember your tools, your technique, and your timing. And then you want to look for the ones that hide. So go out there, weed. Take it as a meditative moment to just be out in nature and we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching and leave some comments and questions below. We'd be happy to answer them. Thanks.